How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to look at Spectre, the 24th film in the long-running James Bond franchise, and the fourth to feature Daniel Craig in the role of James Bond. This movie picks up a little bit after where Skyfall left off, and Bond discovers a pre-recorded message from the former M, played by Judi Dench, instructing him to go after a certain target, which ultimately leads him to a mysterious criminal organization known as Spectre. After some digging, he discovers Spectre has ties to several people he has dealt with before, including Mr. White, who we saw at the very end of Casino Royale and also in the very forgettable Quantum of Solace. With the help of Mr. White's daughter, Madeline Swan, Bond tracks down the leader of this mysterious criminal organization and discovers he has a much deeper tie to Spectre than he even imagined. Meanwhile, back at home, the UK's new national security chief is spearheading a worldwide surveillance program that he sees as a replacement for the outdated 00 program, because the future is with drones and cameras and not with agents. M is naturally not happy about this, as he doesn't like the idea of MI6 being replaced with a bunch of drones, and he puts his efforts into stopping the new security chief, as he suspects him of being an obvious bad guy due to the fact that he keeps acting like an obvious bad guy. Now, the James Bond movies, even the lesser ones, tend to be a lot of fun, and this one is no exception. It has some really good action sequences with plenty of cool stunts, and there's a really neat chase sequence involving an airplane that you may have seen glimpses of in the trailer. You have all sorts of exotic locales which are beautifully shot, and in fact the entire movie is very well shot. They did bring Sam Mendes back to direct this, and after seeing his work with Skyfall, that was definitely a good call. I approve of this decision. The movie has a pretty good sense of humor as well. There's one scene very early on where Bond is falling off of this collapsing building, and lands safely on a sofa, <laughs> just happens to be there. Like, okay, why not? The movie isn't super heavy on the gadgets like a lot of earlier Bond films. Really, the only gadget that Q gives Bond is a watch, which has a, shall we say, a very loud alarm. Very loud. And that's really the only thing he's given, although he does <clears throat> borrow a beautiful Aston Martin DB10, a car that Aston Martin made specifically for this movie, I believe. And the car doesn't have a whole lot to it, apart from being bulletproof, but it does have a flamethrower, and who wouldn't want an Aston Martin with a flamethrower? The opening title sequence was very well done, I thought. Um, the song by Sam Smith, I... I thought it was okay, not one of the better ones in my opinion. I think it might have been a little bit better if Smith had used a bit less falsetto, but it was okay. And it might seem weird to mention something as simple as an opening title sequence, but really, if you think about it, how often do you see an opening title sequence in the movies nowadays? That's pretty much a lost art. Really, the James Bond franchise is one of the last places you can go where you are guaranteed to actually get that. The acting was pretty solid all around. Craig is still a very good James Bond. Ray Fiennes, Ben Wishaw, and Naomi Harris are all just as good as they were in Skyfall. Judy Dench has a very brief cameo. It's not much, but it's always good to see more of her. I really liked Leia Sidu, I hope I'm saying her name right, as the new Bond girl. Very gorgeous, obviously, but also quite dangerous in her own right. Dave Bautista plays a Spectre assassin in this movie, and he is a scary motherfucker. Oh man, I really liked him in this. He, I think he only says one word of dialogue in the entire movie. The rest of the time, he's just very silently crushing people's heads. As silent as you can be while you're crushing someone's skull, I guess. Um, and he has a really cool fight scene on a train with Bond later on in the movie in a scene that's kind of reminiscent of From Russia With Love, except cranked up to 11. And then we come to our villain, Christoph Waltz, as Ernst Stavro Blofeld, the leader of Spectre. Now, a lot of people have expressed some disappointment with the villain this time around, and I think there are two reasons for that. First of all, of course, you can't compare him to Javier Bardem in Skyfall because he was just so fucking awesome. They weren't going to top that. And the second reason is Blofeld really isn't in enough of this movie to have as much of an impact as I think he could have. He is largely an absent villain just kind of operating from the shadows. None of these are any fault of Waltz's, of course, and when he is on camera, 
He's a very good villain, and I think he did a very good job as Blofeld. He was certainly a better Blofeld than Donald Pleasance was, I can tell you that much. Um, although there is a bit of a nod to the Blofeld from You Only Live Twice towards the end of the movie. I'm not going to give anything away, but if you've seen You Only Live Twice, you probably know what I'm getting at here. There were a couple of things about the story that I didn't really care for. Uh, for one thing, the way that they tried to kind of retroactively tie all the previous villains in the other Daniel Craig films into Spectre, and not only that, but the way they tried to tie Blofeld into Bond's origins, it wasn't badly done or anything. It just really felt unnecessary. I didn't feel like it added all that much to the story. Also, M's conflict with C, the new national security chief, didn't always make a whole lot of sense. I understood the part where C is trying to replace MI6 and the double O program and is considering all of them obsolete. That part I get. The part I didn't really get was M's objection to C's worldwide surveillance program. I mean, yeah, it's obtrusive as all hell, and a lot of people would consider it a huge privacy violation. I get that, especially in this day and age. I think that's something a lot of people can relate to. But here's the thing. M is the head of an organization that employs spies. So a guy who makes a living spying on people objects to spying on people. What? I just, I, something's a bit off there. Also, didn't we go through the whole the double O program is obsolete argument already in Skyfall? I could have sworn they touched on that already. It wasn't a major part of the story, but it was there. And one more thing that kind of bugged me, it's not a huge problem, but I don't think they ever actually mention what Spectre stands for. I know what it stands for because I've seen all the previous Bond movies, Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge, and Extortion. But that's never mentioned in this movie, and I have no idea why. I'm not even sure if in the Daniel Craig Bond universe, Spectre does stand for anything, or if it's just something that Blofeld came up with because he thought it sounded cool. In the end, this is probably not one of the better Bond movies, but I still enjoyed the hell out of it, and if you're a Bond fan, this is definitely worth seeing. And if you're not a Bond fan, this is probably not going to convert you. And that's all I have to say about Spectre, so until next time, take care.